I've spent this week in uh, Sydney. My column in the Saturday Herald Sun this weekend will be making in pretty strong language a uh, comparison of Sydney and the Melbourne CBD. Now, I've got to tell you, the Melbourne CBD is a sad, neglected and sorry sight. Sydney's booming, absolutely booming, whether it be the sparkling new office towers at Circular Quay, the rejuvenated Oxford Street that I walked up this morning, or the cleaned up inner city suburb of places like Surrey Hills. Sydney's clean. Melbourne is grotty. I mean, it doesn't give me any comfort to say that. It won't win me many friends back home. But for those watching in Melbourne, do yourself a favour, get to Sydney and see it for yourself. And now the red tape that's been placed on Sydney's nightlife and planning procedures are on their way out. Business Sydney Executive Director Paul Nicolau has written about the way forward under the new Premier in The Telegraph today, and he joins me now. Paul, you must be pretty happy with the way Sydney's looking. I've had two eight-year stints here, as you know. It's never looked better, has it? Oh, it's pumping, Steve. And uh, we've got to maintain the rage, so to speak, and everything we can do to ensure that Sydney remains the number one city in Australia and the number one city in Asia-Pacific we need to look at. I know you're not interested in Melbourne-Sydney brawling. Sydney never does. But Melbourne's just lost the plot. I mean, th th if you go there, sadly, you will see graffiti and filth and dirt... Walking through Surrey Hills today and up into uh, Paddington, that's all been rejuvenated. There's street plantings, it's clean, there's people cleaning down the windows. It's fantastic. Well, credit's got to go to the Lord Mayor, and she's done a great job in ensuring that is the case. But also, businesses are working closely with councils and working with the state government. We have a new state government, and they're enthusiastic and they're really passionate about doing things. We just saw the other day the Premier with uh, Minister uh, Steve and, um, Camper, yep. who are now has allowed, or is in the process of allowing, the Olion Stadium to have uh, more than 20 concerts there, whereas at the present moment they're only allowed six. You, uh, you wrote today about wanting to get rid of red tape. What sort of red tape? Oh, red tape is killing Sydney. That's a big issue. Um, for example, Meriton's Harry Triggerboff, he's got 5,000 homes he can start building straight away, but red tape is stopping him from getting ahead. On the business side, has, uh, has Sydney, like it did several years ago, managed to capture a lot of big businesses' head offices? Is yes. that what all those towers are well, circular they're, they're, it's, key are it's about? It's showing the confidence back in Sydney and these people who are setting up businesses, not only from interstate but overseas, see value in, in investing in Sydney. What is it that, that, that Sydney's done so well? How have you managed to do it? Well, Sydney's got... Can you go to Melbourne and help them out? Well, I mean, look, you know... They look, need Mel all the help they can get, <laughs> yeah. tell Melbourne you. worked very hard. I mean, they don't have the beautiful harbour that we have. But everyone who wants to come to Australia, their first port of call is Sydney. And we've done a great job in doing that. we just now got to build on it and build on that success. Yeah, well, Melbourne doesn't have the harbour, but it used to have the, the reputation of being the, the most livable city in, in the world. Mm. That was pre-COVID. Mm. Mm. I, I, I just think Sydney bounced back out of COVID much better. I mean, there was more lockdowns, obviously, in Melbourne. Yes. But Sydney seems to have been rejuvenated. I mean, I know the road tolls are an issue and how much they yes. cost people, but that road network is absolutely sensational. When I was on air here, uh, I used to criticise the light rail down George Street. Mm. That's rejuvenated mm. George Street. Look, fantastic. I mean, Mike Baird's got to take some of the credit. He leased off the poles and wires and the ports, and then Gladys was able to get in, the Gladys Berejiklian was able to get in and made sure that they built all that infrastructure. And then, then you had Dominic Perrottet who followed through. So it's now up to the, the men's government to ensure that we continue that, that, that enthusiasm and drive and provide that infrastructure that's desperately needed. The mood is good. The mood is great. Oh, look, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I was in the city today and the sun was shining and there were thousands of people out on the streets. We're getting the tourists back. We, ha we, had, we didn't have any tourists coming Second in. The key was pumping oh, today. Well, it is because of the fact is we've got the cruise ships coming in. We've got overseas students. There are 40,000 overseas students have come from China. All of them oh. are just powering money into the economy, which is so vital. I'm not sure I should get on the plane back to Melbourne tonight. I w might not be welcome. Look, we, we all love Melbourne too. We don't <laughs> want to take anything away from Melbourne. But again, Sydney is the number one city in Australia and we're going to make sure that we maintain the rage. No doubt about that. Thank you.